So, this week we're finally going to apply all this multivariate calculus to help us fit functions to data. This is really handy. It allows us to make sense of our data so to start doing statistics testing and to start to really apply all of this stuff we've been doing into the real world. If you have some big bundle of data, the first thing you need to do is to clean it up. Um, there are other courses on this, um, but the first thing you need to do is clean it up to get it into shape to start doing the maths with. That means figuring out what the sensible thing to do is with things like uh, partially empty data entries, uh, zeros, those sorts of things, um, to figure out if you can do any dimensionality reduction by binning or grouping the data together, uh, eliminating duplicates, garbage data, all, all those sorts of things. Um, Often the easiest thing to do is to tag all of your data so that you can reorder them and put them back in where you've changed the order, then sort them um, and look for funny values and then figure out what to do with those, to get rid of them altogether or to replace them with something sensible. And then once you've cleaned it up, you can start graphing it, take averages, look at standard deviations and all those sorts of things. Of course, in doing this, it really helps if you're interested in the data. Uh, you need it to be kind of like a person you, that you want to figure out and understand until it becomes an old friend. If over time as you collect more data uh, and it starts to change, you want to get to the point where you're going to notice those changes, actually. Um, so you really want to get it uh, intimate and friendly with your data. Once you've graphed it in a sensible way, you'll often get a plot like uh, this guy here, which is a simple XY plot of some data. This data seems to plot like a straight line. If you know something physically about the processes involved in generating the data, or if you have some hypothesis as to how the variables are related, then you can try and fit that model to the data. Alternatively, you can just try fitting something sensible based on how it looks, like a, a straight line to this data here, for example. Now, I can model my straight line y here as being a function of the i observations xi and a vector a of the fitting parameters. In the case of a straight line equals y equals mx plus c, then the parameters in the vector a would be the, uh, the gradient m and the intercept c of the straight line. So here I've plotted the optimal straight line for this data. Uh, it happens to have a gradient of 215 gigapascals GPA and an intercept of uh, 0.3 GPA for c. I can also find the mean of x, x bar, and the mean of y, y bar, which are at the geometric center of mass of that data set. Now, in order to find the optimal value of m and c, let's first define a residual r, which we define as the difference between the data items, yi, and the predicted location of those on the line at y, which would be mx plus c. So r is yi minus mxi minus c. Then I can take a measure of the overall quality of the fit, being a quantity I'll call chi squared which is the sum of the squares the residuals are. I do this so that I penalise both data that are above and data that are below the line. I don't want the pluses and minuses to net off against each other. Also, I really want to badly penalise uh, data items that are a long way away from the line. And then I'm going to try and find the best chi-squared possible, the one that's lowest. I'm doing a minimisation. So now, it's worth plotting out what chi-squared is going to look like for lots of different possible values of m and c, which is what I've done on this contour plot here. In the middle at about 215 and near an intercept of zero, I find my minimum, and the further I get away from those, the worse it is. And note that in terms of chi-squared, it's slanted. There seems to be some kind of trade-off. The bigger C gets, the lower the optimum value of the gradient M, and vice versa. And if I look on this plot, that's got it sort of obvious. If I make the line steeper on the original uh, fit, then in order for it to fit well, the intercept's going to have to get smaller. Actually, I'm pivoting about the center of mass. And also this shallow trough here in the chi-squared uh, value is going to be really quite shallow. So this is actually going to be quite a tricky problem for a steepest descent algorithm. It's going to be easy to get down the size, but it's going to be difficult to get down the bottom of the valley to find the actual minimum. But nevertheless, it looks like it's going to be quite an okay problem to solve. It has one easy to spot minimum, uh, and therefore we can find it. Uh, and note that to do this with any precision, if I do it simply by doing lots of computations here, like I've done uh, um, for different m's and c's, and uh, finding the minimum that way, plotting it all out, finding the, the minimum on this graph. To do this, I have to do a lot of maths. In MATLAB, this contour plot took about 200,000 computations to make. 
So even for a simple problem like this, we really do want to find an algorithm that's going to let us get there a bit more efficiently. Now, the minimum is going to be found when the gradient of chi squared is zero. So if we just take the grad of chi squared with respect to the fitting parameters and set it to zero, that's going to be our solution. Now, the neat thing is that in this particular case, we can actually solve this problem explicitly. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Uh, but then we'll go on to see how to do it by linear descent, and then we'll find a better algorithm, and then we'll explore how to do this sort of problem where it's not so easy to do explicitly. So if we differentiate the first row with respect to m, then the first thing to worry about is all these sums over the data items i. But actually, it turns out that we don't need to worry about these sums because we're not differentiating the xi or the yi themselves. So they'll just sit benignly in the sum. You know, mx1 plus mx2 plus mx3 is the same as uh, if we differentiate that with respect to m, it's do we just get x1 plus x2 plus x3. Um, so uh, we don't have to worry about those sums. Uh, and then it's easy, right? We differentiate a square. Uh, that drops in power by 1, uh, uh, and we multiply by 2. And then we take the differential of the inside of the bracket, which with respect to m is minus xi. Uh, we can then uh, take that, that minus 2 outside of the sum altogether, in fact. For the second row, it's easier because the differential of the inside of the bracket with respect to c is just minus 1. So we just get the 2 down from the power and the minus sign, and so it all looks quite easy. Keeping on uh, looking at the second row, then the sum of c times the number of data items we can take out of the sum altogether. And then we've just got the sum of the yi's and the sum of m times the xi's. Um, and if we uh, divide that through by the number of data items, uh, we get our result that c is going to be y bar minus m times x bar, uh, y bar and x bar being the average. Uh, we can carry on in that way and generate an answer to m, which I'm just going to leave here. I don't think there's any point in showing all the maths to you blow by blow. It's a bit trickier to see, and I'm not going to go through actually the maths and the derivation, but you can also find estimates for the uncertainties in C and M, which I put up here, which I'll, I'll call sigma C and sigma M. And it's very important, actually, when you're doing a fit to get an idea of the uncertainties um, in those fitting parameters and to quote those in your fit. So I'm just going to leave those here in case you need to use them. So coming back to our uh, fitted data, we can plot it out again here. Now the amazing thing here is just how accurate this sort of fitting really is. It's really cool. You know, we've got uh, quite noisy data, but and a gradient of 215, but the uncertainty is only 9. It's about 5%. It's really amazing. Um, now you should always plot your fit and visually compare it just as a sanity check. And we can see why this is a good idea here. This is Anscombe's famous quartet. You can find the, uh, the graph on Wikipedia. All these four data sets have the same chi-squared, means, best fit lines, and uncertainties in the fitting parameters. But they're obviously very different data. In the right-hand two cases, probably fitting a straight line is just the wrong thing to do. The bottom left, if you remove the flyer data point, the gradient's different, and the intercept. It's only the top left where the fit's actually doing the right thing altogether. And there's another subtlety, actually, which is if we go back and look at C, the intercept, we can see that the intercept depends on the gradient m, which is what we said earlier when we looked at our plot of chi-squared. Now, there's a way to recast the problem, which is to look at the deviations from the center of the mass of the data at x bar instead. And then the intercept, b now, rather than c, is the location of the center of mass in y at y bar. And then, the uh, constant term in the fit B, that constant B, doesn't depend on the gradient anymore, and neither, therefore, does its uncertainty include a term from the uncertainty in M. In fact, if I plot out uh, the contour plot for chi-squared, when I do that, I find that it then isn't slanted. It's a nice sort of circular-looking thing, because I've removed the interaction between M and the constant term. So it's a mathematically much more reasonable, well-postulated problem. Um, so, that's the essence of regression, of how to fit a line to some data. And this is a totally, really useful life skill, whatever, almost whatever your professional job. What we'll do in the next couple of videos is look at how to do this in more complicated cases with more complicated functions, and how to extend the idea of regression to those cases. 
The main thing really that we've defined here that's important to remember is this goodness of fit estimator, chi-squared, the sum of the squares of the deviations of the fit from the data. And chi-squared is going to be really useful to us going forward.